no, vieni qua, vieni qua. Dean Zanchina, Dean Temple Rome, ciao, welcome. Can you just say it again? Like yes, I would like to welcome you to the first gallery opening for the season, A Word of Troubles, discussing the relationship between words and images and how those can go in, in, in harmony or quite the opposite, in disharmony. Uh, and we're very happy to have our usual crowd here, uh, a group of people that are part of our temple community who usually come here and for every gallery opening. But more importantly, we're so excited to have our first in-person event post-COVID and to be exactly. doing it, following all the regulations and having all the fun all the same. In fact, <laughs> at the entrance, we saw our security guard. He was checking temperature. Of course, the people are re registered for this event before. If not, they have to leave their contact number. They uh, sanitize their hands before coming in. And of course, everybody's wearing a mask for the whole length of the uh, gallery opening because we cannot keep the distance all the time, this one meter distance all the time. That's why. But in a safe I just Space. wanted to say that there's some positives to this. I don't need to buy lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Thank you, Emilia. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Ciao e a presto. Ciao. Ciao, Emilia. Francesca, what's Gianni. going on? Oh my God, we are so happy to have our crowd back. Uh, after so many months of uh, stop of in-person events, we are finally having an, an in-person event again. And look, look at this. There are so many people around. Exactly. I mean, we we, we want to say that response. this is uh, the number of people. Of course, there are a certain it's in number. in line with the with the maximum capacity we exactly. can have, uh, ensuring everyone's safety. And uh, again, as you, you, you as you said, we we are uh, we are using all of the safety uh, measures that are exactly. required by law. Uh, but yet, I mean, we, we are very happy that uh, we had such a great response because... It is good. Uh, it is, this is great. Uh, something like a, maybe a little bit unexpected as of uh, the opening, uh, but uh, this is great. I love it. I love it. We, we just cannot wait to have our students back here in spring. Exactly, because now all our, forward to. our students are all online. Of there course. are no like, people, students here except, except Ricardo. Except Ricardo, yes. Who's helping us tonight. Yes. We saw Elric at the entrance. But we are waiting for the students in the spring. We are waiting for the students yes. in the spring. We are here. We are ready to welcome them and uh, to share with, with them uh, this amazing experience and these amazing events uh, that, they, that we will organize in spring as well. So. Grazie Francesca. Grazie Enjoy the gallery opening. Ciao. And uh, ciao Francesca. Here I have uh, Shara Wasserman. Ciao Shara. Ciao. Ciao Gianni, buongiorno, hello. Buongiorno for Californian people. For California, say. buongiorno to California. California. Hello. Or maybe Japan, because Tokyo, Japan is my watch us. It's a 2 a.m. to 1.30, something like that, in the morning of the next day. I know some Italian friends are watching also. They answered and said, so for everybody who's out there, Italian or Japanese, I welcome you all. So Shara, do you want to say who you are uh, here at Temple yes. Rome and where are we? What's happening yes. tonight? So, my name is Shara Wasserman. I know the mask makes it hard to hear. I'm director of exhibitions at Temple Rome. This is the gallery space. Uh, very proud of this beautiful gallery space. And, um, and, and, uh, and I welcome you all to this evening's exhibition, which is called A Word That Troubles. And it is... The mask, the mask. They're telling like... Oops, my mask. I'm we sorry. Used it like and it is curated, speaker. and it's no, it's hard. And it's curated by Gaia Bobo, who's a young curator, and we're very, uh, always very eager to invite young artists and young curators to work with us. We're at, at, at university, so we continue this educational uh, aspect. And uh, and the show is a marvelous show. So I'm going to hand you over to Gaia, and then I'll come on at the end and say and say ciao ciao to everybody. Thank you, Shara. So thank you, Johnny. Great and here's job. Gaia. Thank you, Gaia. Hi, welcome to Temple University. This is your first experience, of first uh, uh, here in this gallery, right? Yeah, it is. Exactly. Yes, of course. I'm so free. Gaia, what are we going to watch tonight live? Okay. What is it? I, I will try to be synthetic. So the exhibition. Um, tries to investigate the relation be between words and image. So how these two languages are uh, conflicting or they are harmonizing one another. 
and also the way in which one word, one language can trouble the other one. So there's all in this balance between word and image that we're going to explore within the research of different artists from many different uh, generations and internationally uh, various. So yeah. I guess we yeah. can start. We're going to start from there. Before yeah. we start, I just want to say to our friends who are watching this video live, if you have any questions, we have our fantastic Emily Kravitz, who's our external relations manager, who's behind the scenes, checking all the live feed. And of course, thanks to Antonio Curioso from the tech department here at Temple University for you know holding the camera and everything. But if you have any questions, go ahead. Emily will tell me your question here. We're going to ask Gaia. Uh, so go ahead or just say ciao if you want. Uh, put your question. Okay, Gaia. So we're going to start from here, right? We start from that, okay. that one. Um, I will try to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the work uh, by Alessia Armeni. Uh, she's a painter and this is a really subtle research on color and chromatic scale. And as you can see, if you zoom, on the paintings. This is an autonomous pictorial work, but in some, uh, you see in some parts, really um, smooth, it's written, there's an act of naming the color. And so the, the aim is to expand the color itself by a poetical act that um, is, let's say, contextualized in his research on prof Profil Perdu, uh, which is this kind of representation of the portrait taken from the back. Okay. And then we'll, we'll move, move to the next one, right? Yeah, we can go. We can go. On. And this um, here, this is the research of Benjamin Zolfagari, which is an Iranian artist, and his research places in between, um, uh, let's say, pictorial and verbal research, and it goes in the in the notion of sign. So let's say there's this ambiguity and this this, this originality in the two languages that stay in one because um, let's say making a sign is the first impulse of human beings and so this is in research also, um, tells about the origin of the artist itself and then we can go on with the next work which sure. is from uh, Emanuele Beccheri and this is a work that uh, recalls uh, the famous Ce ce pas un pip, but this is uh, let's say ce ce pas une idée. And so it's, uh, this is a monotype, so this is a way to express the need to, of the materiality of the work against the conceptual one, which is of course used, but um, it is, uh, uh, let's say, troubled in, right. in this way. Um, if you see any artist like they're around, we would like it to see also them, like maybe we can just ask a few questions, right? But we're going to move to this one right now. Okay, let's go, Antonio. Okay, this work is from Edo Eduardo Rita, and this is a video um, and it's um, this is recorded in India and this is takes um, fr it starts from the elephant in the room which is a way of saying uh, which is translated visually so this is a way of saying that indicates normally a bad situation in which people know uh, one fruit which is not which is accepted but is uh, in conflict and in this way, with this visual representation, this is um, troubled because the, uh, the elephant in the room is uh, living, harmonizing with the, um, with the person inside. We can very go. nice, very, this is a really interesting, Gaia. How long did it take for you to organize all of this? Well, the process, process was quite long because I started to think about the exhibition last year. Then, of course, we, we set the date with, uh, with Shara Wasserman. And then we, we finally decided from this, and then the research took one year, let's say. Wow, wow, congratulations. Okay, we go to the next yeah. one. Here. This is another work from Alessia Armeni, which, which we saw also before, and it's still the same rough rapport between the color and the image, as you can see from the, from the live, from the zoom. Okay, and then we can move this on is to... really, like, it's really... Yeah, it's so subtle. I know, it's really subtle. Okay, now we're going to move uh, to, I'm sorry, to this one right here, right? I don't know if you can see it uh, very well. This is the work by Francesco Carone. And this is an um, uh, artist book 
uh, printed in 100 copies. And uh, th this is the translation of the um, Torre di Babele by Borges. And this is, the text has been translated for 140 times in 140 different languages to go back to the original language so that it, it is deconstructed as a code, but then it appears again in Italian to, uh, let's say, present another poetic that's made by the artificial intelligence. That's the, that's the idea. And the we're going to move it that way there, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. here, right here. Actually. Yeah, this one. Okay, what is this one? This one is a work by Alessandra Draghi, and this is made by two uh, sewage parts, and this is one inkjet print. And this is uh, works on uh, ekphrasis, and um, because both of the, um, of the verbal part are description by works by Piero della Francesca, and this, uh, let's say, visual part is another, a composition by the artist which still follows the, um, uh, the humanism uh, representational codes, let's say, so this has this influence of humanism. And then we can go on yes. to Felipe Lipe's work. He's a Brazilian artist based in Hamburg, Germany, and these are all visual poetries. And uh, the visual part are found images taken from archive that, um, let's say, that witness uh, parts of uh, post-colonial and colonialism um, research. And then the verbal part is, is uh, a poetical work by the artist that has both, um, his research is both poetical and both visual. In this case, you have the two together, but it's really various um, research, in fact. It is. Did you expect so many people today? No, <laughs> but I'm so happy to know that people are still coming to exhibition. With safety measures. I think uh, there's a sentiment all around that, that uh, people really wanted to go back to normality. And what we say all the time here, uh, Italy slowly is getting back to normality. As of today, September 21st, we want to say the situation is going better. We opening this finally this gallery opening. Of course, there's a lot of uh, procedures that we need to respect. Uh, a certain number of people inside, but we're trying to get back, and this is great. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank and uh, thanks to all the artists who have been like uh, so passionate about this and uh, doing like a great job. Well, we move on to the next one. Yeah, yes. we move to the next one. This is still Francesco Carone, the same one as the translation of Borges, but this is a work, this is an astronomy, uh, book of astronomy, and all the parts are erased with ink. And it, what you see is just the O's that are in the page. So it recalls a uh, star sky. So you have the book that's talking about astronomy, but then finally you have the shape of the um, sky full of stars in the, in the book itself. And it's a work in, pro in process, uh, work in progress wow. work. Yeah. And the last one, last but not least, is a work by Polish artist Agnieszka Mastalers. And she's a young um, artist and she's working on teams of control and and around this and this work is um how do you say takes the inspiration by this uh, orchid root uh, tradition in which orchid roots are used as a um, uh, love filter let's say so it plays with your spell spell as an enchantment um, so this work around the, the possibility of the word and in this case of the of one's act to influence another human being's behavior and so you have this imaginary that's mechanical and it gives the idea of let's say putting got it is this a real old television right it this is <laughs> it is yes <laughs> and uh, this is the great the biggest orchid factory in polish in poland and so yeah this is this has this fashion, no? you know, the whole right. fashion. Um, yeah, so that's the last one. Gaia, this is like, it's been like a really, really interesting, I have to say. I like, well, the exhibition is really great, which is going to be here at Temple University of Rome Gallery until October 15, right? 15, yes. Perfect. You can come anytime. We're open from Monday to Friday from 9 to 6. 
uh, no need to reserve because there won't be like that many people uh, coming over at the same time. So the distance is always assured between among people. Uh, we're going to ask you just to leave your phone number for contact tracing, of course, uh, to sanitize your hands and to wear the uh, mask all the time. But this is our rules that we learned. Um, and we need to live with these rules for a while, I guess. So, but I want to say thank you and thank you all the artists for this uh, wonderful, wonderful exhibition. Thank you, Antonio, for doing this. Thank you, Emily, for being uh, our uh, leader uh, controlling the live streaming event. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Ciao from Roma. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, Gaia. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you so much. Thank you.